intention is you may say, uh, I want uh, a healing, I want a new job, I want uh, a new relationship. Now, the moment you ask the question, the what if question, what would it be like to be in love, what would it be like to have a new job, what would it be like to be in a new relationship, to, to do whatever, to be, to be healed. The moment you ask that question, uh, the part of your brain called the frontal lobe, which is the crowning achievement of the human being, 40% of your brain is the frontal lobe, it's the workshop, it's the creative center. The frontal lobe has connections to all other parts of your brain. The moment you ask an open-ended question, you speculate a possibility. The creative center turns on and it looks out over the landscape of the entire brain and begins to call up different networks of neurons that are stored in your brain based on something you've learned intellectually, knowledge, or something you've experienced in your life. Like, well, I know what it is to be in love, or I know what it is to have a good job, or I read a book about it. And it begins to call up these different networks of neurons, and then it seamlessly pieces them together to create a new idea, a new vision. And when you put all those networks together and they fire in tandem, you'll get a clear picture in your mind. And that clear picture is called intention. Mm -hmm. Now, the more you have conditions or the more you have specifics about that job, like for example, I want to make this amount of money more a year, I want to have health benefits, I want to have three weeks vacation, I want to travel, I want to work with great unlimited creative people. That all is the elements that help to add to that vision. Now, the picture you get in your mind could be, could be the letter, the word job, or it could be just an image that's personal to you. But the image then represents all of those conditions. So you can have several conditions that make up your intention. But the intention typically is a symbol, like you may see a retreat center that you may want to start and you have a picture of it. But once you see that picture, the next thing that happens, you start to live mm. that dream. The moment you start to take that dream and it turns into a living motion picture, now you're in that imaginary place. And what happens is the moment it starts taking on form and it starts taking on time, you start to experience it and all the things you're going to do, you're actually living in that future and your brain does not know the difference between the actual event that takes place in your life and what you're imagining in your mind. We call it mental rehearsal in my work, but you're literally rewiring yourself to the future. Now your brain is no longer a record of the past. It's now, in fact, a map to the future. Now, most people stop at this level, but there's another level. Because once you have that intention, and I watched you do this, what makes the intention uh, have life when you combine it with that emotion. Why? Because your body is your unconscious mind. It doesn't know the difference between an experience in your life that creates an emotion and an emotion that you're fabricating by thought alone. So your body now, as the unconscious mind, is living in that future in the present moment and you're beginning to epigenetically change your cells in preparation for that event. So then, here's the, here's the condition, the caveat. That means then you can't wait for your healing to feel wholeness. You have to feel wholeness for your healing to occur. That means you can't wait for your new relationship to feel love. You have to feel love so your relationship finds you. It means you can't wait to be to have your new job to feel empowered. You have to be empowered by the thought of your new job. So we're switching the model around because most people wait for something outside of them right. to change how they mm -hmm. feel inside of them. And when they feel better inside of them, they get relief and they say, I like you, you helped me with that. That's cause and effect. That's the old model of reality. What we're talking about here in the quantum model is cause and effect, which means then you are going to have to change how you think and how you feel before the experience occurs in order for the event to find you. <laughs> if your personality creates your personal reality, and your personality is made of how you think, how you act, and how you feel, the present personality who's listening to this show has created the present personal reality called their life. So if they wanted to create a new personal reality, a new life, they would have to start thinking about what they were thinking about and change it. Start to become conscious of their unconscious habits and behaviors and modify them. Now here's the key. 
They have to look at the emotions that they've memorized that keep them anchored to the past and decide if those emotions belong in their future. So most people try to create a new personal reality as the same personality that doesn't work. In other words, a wealthy person doesn't feel lack. You can't bring lack into your future. You know, a sick person doesn't feel desperation. They feel wholeness. And so then, by re-identifying with the future, and then instead of your past, present reality, it's very, very easy conversation to have. But actually doing it requires a tremendous amount of awareness. And that awareness means then that you have to stay conscious and pay attention to who you're being all the time. And you can't let any thought slip by your awareness that's going to cause you to return back to the old self. You can't begin to react emotionally to people and things in your life that cause you to feel like the old self. You can't talk and complain and blame and make excuses or go back to old habits and expect your future to show up. You have to maintain that state for a period of time so that your body catches up because the body and brain live in the past. So it takes uh, a certain amount of repetition, and a certain amount of consciousness, a certain amount of will to finally arrive there. And I'm happy to say that it's possible. Well, number one, Fill your brain with knowledge, turn the TV off, sit down and read a book or watch a video that's going to inspire you. Knowledge is the precursor to experience. The more knowledge you have, the more prepared you are for the event. And when you start losing track of your vision, it's because more than likely you're emotional. Because the moment you feel emotional, you can't see the future because you're looking at your future through the lens of the past. Get up in the morning, get out of bed, and take time for your precious self. You and I are a work in progress. And if we are not changing our brain and body in some way, priming it for the future, we're gonna be very predictable the rest of the day. We're gonna be in our past. Take time for yourself every morning and ask yourself a simple question. One day, one lifetime, what is the greatest expression of myself I can be today? How would a great person think? How would they act? How would they feel? Can I teach my body emotionally how that future person is going to feel now? Make the deal with yourself that you're not going to get up from your meditation until you feel differently. If you do, get up and maintain that modified state of mind and body your entire day. Independent of any person, anything, or experience in your life. Independent of any emotional addiction or habit in your body and independent of time. And if you can, get ready because something unusual is going to happen in your life. That's the law. And so when synchronicities and serendipities and uh, coincidences begin to happen in your life, unexpected events like balloons showing up in the windows to remind you that the divine is present, that's an indicator that you are literally now in a dance be in, in this world between your free will consciousness and this consciousness that's controlling all of this. And when your consciousness every day merges with that consciousness, why not be bold enough to say to the Creator, Hey Creator, I took time out of my busy day to emulate you. I'm the son and daughter of God. I am, I am emulating you as a Creator. But here's the deal. I need a sign from you to let me know that you're real. But don't bring it in a way that I can expect, because if it comes in a way that I expect, it's nothing new rock my world. When that starts happening to you on a regular basis, you're less prone to judge your co-worker. You're less prone to get upset in traffic. And, and when the mystical starts downloading data into your brain and you start having really profound experiences, there's only one thing you want to do, and that is to give. You cannot not give in that place. And you can never return back to business as usual, ever again. And so, is it worth the effort? I think so. We now know that when you're analyzing your life within some emotion that's bothering you, you will make your brain worse every time because it's those very emotions that drive your brain further into higher and more aroused states. And since the emotion is a record of the past, the person's basically thinking in the past. <laughs> they can't resolve the problem from the past. When they get beyond that emotion, <clears throat> that's when they begin to see the answer that they've been looking for for themselves. We know that. 
We also know that when people are living with their attention on things and objects and people and they're living by the hormones of stress and they're obsessing about time and obsessing about their bodies, that they have very little effects or changes in their brain. We also know that when a person gets to the place where there are no body, no one, no thing, no where, and no time, that's the moment they literally are pure consciousness. Now consciousness is what changes the brain. The brain never changes the brain. The program never changes the program. The personality never changes the personality. The ego never changes the ego. Matter never changes matter. It's only when a person becomes pure consciousness that consciousness with that energy is the epiphenomenon of matter. And so when people reach this elegant state where they disconnect from their body, that's when they can heal their body. When they forget about their life, that's when they can change their life. Uh, when they get beyond all of their elements that they identify with, that's the moment where they can begin to change their life or create some new time.